What's up, everybody? Eddie here. Now, I'm going to go off on a tangent here, but let me just say, before I got ready to make this uh, little ranting and raving, I went to go put on my headset, the nicer headset with the cushioned ears and the little mic piece that's, you know, that comes out from the headset. One of my favorites, and it helps block out the noise. Well, I went to put it on my head and the damn thing snapped. <sighs> so I'm going to have to jerry rig that thing because I'm not looking to spend that type of money right now. So I got my standard uh, headset in my phone. So you're probably going to hear lots of static and shit, no uh, surrounding noise. And I apologize in advance. So I just posted up a video about my one week review on Xfinity. And I think I might have to edit that or update it, I should say. The update is uh, when I first started Xfinity, I uh, had added insurance. Now I had an issue with my first Note 8, the battery was defective, so I ordered an exchange. And in the process of the exchange, the woman notified me that I was, I did not have insurance. And, uh, but though, because I was still in my 30 days that I would get my replacement, right? So, which I found very strange because I've had T-Mobile, uh, Sprint, AT&T, and plenty of phones I never had insurance on. But when it came to uh, manufacture issue software, they would always send me a replacement, no problem. So that's awfully strange, but because Xfinity is still new and growing and learning, I give them the benefit of the doubt. But the insurance wasn't added, so that was disappointing. So I decided to just focus on the exchange because I wanted to, because this is a new company, I wanted to take it one step at a time. I didn't want to confuse the woman. I didn't want to, you know, mix things up. So I went through with the exchange. Now, I went through the exchange. I uh, got my new phone, set it up, updated it. Battery is amazing. Fast charge is amazing. But, well, I decided that, okay, well, I need my insurance on this device. So yesterday, which was Sunday, I called up. And called up, woman said, oh... We can't add it over the phone. You have to go into the store. So I go into the store, which is a little out of my way. But, you know, I don't mind driving somewhere if I'm going to get something resolved. I got to the store, the Xfinity store, and the uh, woman looked at me as if I had three heads. Like I was absolutely like this is the most insane thing she's ever heard. In the existence of her life. And uh, she um, said, she looked at my phone, went through my app, the Xfinity app, couldn't find anything. Basically, it looked like a monkey trying to hump a football. It made no sense. She didn't know what she was doing. She was just occupying my time. So I left there to no avail. And I got home after I ran some errands. I called up again. And this lady says, oh, we can do it over the phone. You need to set up pocket geek on your phone phone comes with it i disabled it because i didn't know what it was and i didn't like i don't like bloatware but i reinstalled it and ran it and we were on the phone for about 20 30 minutes trying to have her system connect to my phone via pocket geek which it would test the phone Okay, we were running through different options, different things to try to get it to work. For some reason, did not seem to connect. So at the end, she tells me, you're going to have to go into the store. And I told her my experience in great detail at the store and that I didn't want to have to do that option, that I needed, I wanted to get this handled now. That this was not my fault, it was an error on the... Uh, customer service rep that I t spoke to when I started this account but that was it nothing to go there so we hung up and I 
had to calm down. I waited about an hour. Then I returned the phone call to see if I could speak to somebody else. So I spoke to this final person. And uh, so that's four people total, right? And uh, this guy, he says, well, I tell him everything that happened, you know, with the think geek, the pocket geek, going to the store the first time, calling the first time, all that. And he says, yeah, pocket geek is something that we had an, uh, a meeting about a week ago, but that's not implemented yet. So, I'm t- so I was like, how is it that everyone at Xfinity, Comcast in general, just has all the wrong information. Everyone seems to know nothing or they think they know something and they are completely wrong. So this man tells me that the pocket geek is not something they can do and that the lady was wrong for that. And that uh, I have to go back into the store and that they have to physically check my phone for damage and then they would have to contact some sales number Give them their ID, get the ID over the phone, get some passcode, and uh, put it into the system, and then add the insurance. All right, so this whole NASA-like freaking uh, process, just to get insurance on a device that I had already asked for insurance on the get-go. So I do not understand this, but that was my hassle thus far. So four different people, four different answers. Nobody seems to know what the hell is going on. Everything ends up with you being told to go to an Xfinity store. And guess what? There's not that many Xfinity stores out there. I luckily have one that's about 20 minutes away from me. But that's a pain in the ass because there's nothing in that area for me to go to afterwards. Now, if I had a guarantee, if I knew that I would go to an Xfinity store and I would have my situation handled, I have no problem going. But see, this stems back from having Comcast home internet. And I always have an issue. Always had an issue, always have an issue. For some reason, it's as if the call center and the stores are not related in in any fashion. They're not under the same umbrella. They're not the same company. It's like you call the call center, they give you one thing, you go to the store, they tell you another, and none of their stories ever match. And this has been a persistent problem with home internet. But I thought, you know what, Xfinity Mobile is brand new. Maybe they're going to push it hard and they're going to push it right. But no, customer service tends to be the major issue with Xfinity Mobile and Comcast in general. I was very displeased with my customer service experience, both in store and on the phone. And, you know, when you go on YouTube, you go on the comment section, you go online, you, you Google it. Customer service is the main thing that comes up as to why Comcast has such low reviews or a low rating. Now, I'm not telling you to not get Xfinity Mobile because, number one, they're charging you no down payment for a phone. And they tell you you can't bring your own phone, but that's been disproven. They're not pushing it, but you can bring an unlocked device and get a Samsung, I'm sorry, get a Xfinity mobile sim, pop it in. You just have to manually play with the APM and all those settings, and you can get it to work. It's all on the internet already. It's out there on Google. You have to do a little work because you're not going to get anywhere contacting Xfinity. But that's besides the point. You get yourself a phone for, for, for me, the Note 8, $40 a month, no down payment, no checking your credit, none of that nonsense. You get the phone. You order it online, you get it in three to five days, or you can go to the Xfinity store and get it on the spot. That's the beauty of it. Now, you know, uh, the service runs off of Verizon. And I've had them for two weeks now, and it's been amazing. You you can't compare it, Verizon, to to Sprint. I, I have service in places I didn't have service before. I have fast internet in places I didn't have internet before. I'm able to surf the web while being on the phone. I'm a guy who uses his headset when he's on the phone. I don't ever hold the phone to my face. Not because of some weird health thing, but it's because it's just I like having a hand free or I don't want to use my shoulder to hold my phone. I just like having the phone in my pocket, earbuds in, 
And I can then pull out the phone and look up something, Google something, look up an address, all while I'm being on the phone. You can't do that with Sprint. And that is amazing that a company is still so far behind in tech like Sprint is. But yet they claim to have a bunch of spectrum and, you know, blazing fast internet. But that's only if you're in their key market areas. And that's a very few and far in between in the United States. So, anyways, before I go off on Sprint, that's a whole different uh, ball game. And I already made a review on Sprint. I got a few people who gave me thumbs down. They might be Sprint uh, customers, but that's okay. I got love for you too. But Xfinity Mobile has been amazing thus far. I don't want to be one of those people that sit here and talk shit just because the customer service sucks. And I tell you, oh, don't go with them. That's bullshit. The service is great. You just got to make sure when you get something set, number one, make sure they know you know when you're setting up your account that you are interested in the insurance. You want the insurance. My alternative is go to Samsung Premium Care. Sign up for it, and uh, it's $11.99 a month, a $99 deductible, and they cover everything. And the cool thing is, is if you make a claim... They'll send you a device within 24 to 48 hours. And then once you get the new device, you send your old one back. That's it. There's no more sending it out, waiting two weeks before you get your phone back. Those are the old days. This is the new Samsung is stepping their game up. So now I have Samsung Premium Care and I will not continue to fight with Xfinity for something so insignificant like insurance. So... There's other alternatives out there, people. You just got to do your math. You got to do your homework. The, my greatest piece of advice is if you're going to go with Xfinity Mobile, be tech savvy. It's very important that you are because you can answer a lot of these questions without having to contact them on your own. If it's a billing issue, obviously you have to. But anything else, if your phone's acting up, service is bad, Google it. That's your best, best friend right there. Get the answers to the best of your abilities through that because contacting them will be a nightmare. Now, the one positive I can give you is the wait times. I have never waited more than 10 minutes on the phone to get a representative. So they have that going for them, but that's it. You're going to get a rep. They're not going to know what the hell they're talking about, and you're just going to sit there holding, well, I don't want to curse too much, but you're going to be holding your shit in your hand, and that's it. I know that's kind of hypocritical because I said I don't want to curse, but I curse anyways. But I use that word instead of another word that I think is a little bit more vulgar than shit. Anyways, that's really me going off on a tangent here, ranting and raving, living up to the title. I just want to say thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, I feel much better now that I got this off my chest. And uh, I'll be putting it up on YouTube. Um, I got a lot of things coming in the works. I got an Xbox One X review. I got a Note 8 review. I got the S, the Surface Pro review coming. Now that I got the camera set up the way I like it. And I have, uh, well, the, cam the camera setup was the most important. Um... Now that I got it all more, it's run, it's working a little bit better here. It's a little more copacetic. Uh, I'll be pumping out videos uh, a little bit more frequently uh, leading up to the move. The move is right around the corner now, so I might disappear for a little bit. I'll try my best to keep these guys updated. Anyways, I'm gonna be I'm done rambling here. Thanks for listening. You've been the best. Peace out, everybody.